Hi, this is Josh Marshall from TPM Media. It's Thursday, May 10th, 2007. This morning at 9.30, Alberto Gonzalez, the Attorney General, is going back up to Capitol Hill to testify again about the U.S. Attorney purge scandal. You know, he spoke before the Senate Judiciary Committee last April 19th. Today he's going up and he's going to speak to the House Judiciary Committee, probably co cover a lot of the same territory, but over the last month or so, a lot of new news has come to the fore. So we're going to run through what we think are some key questions that Attorney General Gonzalez should be asked today in this hearing. So one, Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez's secret order giving hiring and firing authority to Kyle Sampson and Monica Goodling and cutting out of the loop the Deputy Attorney General Paul McNulty, the person who is supposed to be in charge of day-to-day -day running of the entire department. This, you remember, is from an article that Murray Waz wrote in National Journal about a week and a half ago. So what is Gonzalez's explanation for why he did this? What was the reason for giving this the hiring authority to these relatively junior employees at the Department of Justice and cutting out the Senate-confirmed Deputy Attorney General? Two, we've known for a while that Alberto Gonzalez was upset about the testimony that Deputy Attorney General Paul McNulty provided to the Senate back in February. What's been less clear is what got him so upset. Now, in a private interview, with congressional investigators, Kyle Sampson says that what got Alberto Gonzalez so upset is that McNulty had revealed the White House's role in the U.S. attorney firings. So the question to Gonzalez is, why was he so troubled that the White House role was revealed? Three, Todd Graves, the former U.S. attorney from Kansas City. We learned just yesterday that Todd Graves was actually the first U.S. attorney fired in 2006. We hadn't heard anything about this, or at least no proof about this, until yesterday. So the question is to Alberto Gonzalez, why was Todd Graves fired? And related to that, since congressional investigators have been investigating the U.S. attorney firings for almost three months now and have made re repeated document requests and subpoenas, to the Department of Justice, why has nothing been released to date having anything to do with Graves' firing? Number four, our man Bradley Schlotzman, the guy who replaced Todd Graves as U.S. Attorney in Kansas City. Bradley Schlotzman brought a series of vote fraud indictments just five days before the November 2006 election, even though this flies in the face of a long-standing Justice Department policy not to bring vote fraud indictments just before elections because of the risk that they will suppress minority voter turnout. Alberto Gonzalez, when he testified before the Senate only a few weeks ago, reiterated this policy. Let's listen. First of all, with respect to voter fraud generally, um, as someone who grew up in a poor neighborhood, uh, the one day we were equal to everyone else was on election day. And so I really appreciate how important the right to vote is. Voter fraud to me means you're stealing somebody's vote. And so I take this very, very seriously. Having said that, in enforcing or prosecuting voter fraud, we need to be careful that we don't discourage people or intimidate people from participating on election day. And I think it's, it's, it's important to send a strong signal that if you're going to do an investigation, uh, be sensitive to the fact that you don't want to you don't want to create a, have a chilling effect or create some kind of cloud and discourage people from, from participating. Uh, and so that to me is very, very important. We, we have guidance about that, doing those kind of investigations right. near an election because it's important to enforce the law. It's important to pursue voter fraud. But let's be sensitive about the effect it has on particularly minority participation. Okay, Schlotzman clearly violated that policy. So. What does Alberto Gonzalez think of those indictments, and why did he let those indictments go forward? We have a question for Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez from TPM Reader LG. Let me read it. Are you aware of anyone from the Department of Justice or anyone acting at the behest of the Justice Department communicating with Deborah Yang about her resignation as U.S. Attorney for the Central District of California in advance of that event? If so, what do you know about it? Now, this is an important question because Deborah Yang was the U.S. Attorney in Los Angeles, and her office was in charge of the investigation of Representative Jerry Lewis of California. Now, that is an investigation which was an offshoot of the Cunningham investigation, and there's been a lot of suspicion as to why she would have resigned right about the same time that the other U.S. attorneys were fired. There's also something new that we know that we didn't know last time Attorney General Gonzalez testified. That is that his former chief of staff, in a private interview with congressional investigators, Samson told the investigators that late last year, White House counsel Harriet Myers asked Sampson repeatedly 
about the possibility of firing Deborah Yang. President Bush's White House counsel wanted to have Yang fired, and she discussed this a number of times with Kyle Sampson. So again, we have no direct evidence that Deborah Yang was fired. However, she was in charge of a major public corruption investigation of a Republican. She resigned right about the same time as the other U.S. attorneys were fired. And now we've learned that the White House counsel was very eager to have her fired and communicated this desire to the guy in charge of putting together the firing list, Kyle Sampson. So the question to Alberto Gonzalez is, what did he know about Harriet Meyer's desire to have Yang fired, and does he know anything about whether or not Yang was pushed to resign? Those are our questions. You can watch Attorney General Gonzalez's testimony all today. I'm Josh Marshall from TPM Media, and we'll talk to you next week.